Today we're unboxing the new MPVI 2 Plus from HP Tuners. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and you heard me right. We have the new MPVI 2 Plus coming out today. This is the official new interface moving forward from HP Tuners. And there's a couple uh, neat things that they've done differently on this one to bring it up to speed to make it the next generation device, such as now we've got full support for Bluetooth 5.0, which is gonna work better for your iOS and Android devices out there, uh, better communication speed for, uh, you know, maybe if you're doing the remote scanning, things like that. And then on top of it, we've got true USB-C on here, whereas the old device had USB-C on it. It was not using the USB-C protocol. This one's 12 times faster. Faster, and so this one should actually transfer some data faster. Now keep in mind that the data transfer from your ECM and TCM and things like that are going to be based on CAN bus speeds. And so most USBs probably already going to be fast enough for that. But as we move into next generation platforms and as those protocols get updated, the CAN bus protocol and so forth, if they end up opening more bandwidth up on those things like that, we're going to be able to have full support to match all those speeds. So let's go ahead, jump over to the table, let's unbox it. We'll take a look at it and compare it to the old MPVI 2. Okay, as you can see before me, I have the new MPVI 2 Plus in its new box. I like the new uh, form factor on the box that they've done. It's kind of got the slide out here. And then I have the old MPVI 2, so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and look at what exactly has changed on these things because the factor, the form factor has changed a little bit. And there's a pretty good reason behind that that we'll talk about. So as we open this up, we go straight in. We've got a quick start guide here. That just kind of gives you the basics of how to register. You know, it's got QR codes for getting the suite, putting support tickets in, or reaching the knowledge base. If you haven't checked out the knowledge base lately, it's at support.hptuners.com. Do that. There's often really good information specifically around new devices like this that talk about some of the features. And now we've got our MPVI 2 Plus and a couple numbered boxes here on the side, but let's go ahead and pull out our interface and take a look at it versus the old one. And you can see right away, it's a little bit bigger. And that means, uh, you know, they've changed some of the chipset around. And the one thing that sticks out right away is that the OBD2 connector is actually flipped, which is good to see because back on the older device, most of the wide connectors on OBD2 connectors are always on the top side underneath the dash, and so we were plugging this in upside down. Not that it really makes a big difference, but at least now, whenever we plug it in, it'll be right side up. The next big thing that's gonna stand out is the old ProLink connector that was on the side of the MPVI2 is now gone. That's because they've moved it to the face and they've changed the connector over to an automotive style connector. And this is a four pin with a screw retainer. So it's a positive retention connector on here. The nice thing about that is if you were running the old one with the ProLink, sometimes that slot where we plug in the OBD2 port is really tight and having the uh, dongle hanging off the side could interfere and cause issues. So they've addressed that and not only did they address it, they put a better connector on there to boot. So good on them for that and keep your eyes peeled for the new ProLink. It should be uh, coming out here in the next week or so and we will do a review on that, hook everything up and check it out. So they'll be called the ProLink Plus. If you are buying a ProLink for an older MPVI2, make sure that you differentiate between the Plus and just the standard two. The Plus is what's going to surround everything for the new device. So, what else do we have here? Well, it kind of looks the same on the top side of it. We've got a USB-C port on it, but it's an actual USB-C protocol port as opposed to this one is essentially a USB like 2.0 port. And the nice thing about this being USB-C is that it's going to work on your 2.0 and your 3.0 ports. I know sometimes people have issues with the older MPVI2 not working on some ports of their laptops. This one should not have that problem. So that's another benefit. In fact, the Dell that I tuned on for years, I only had one port that I could use it on. Uh, the other ones, it just was not happy with. Uh, we've got our standard button here, 
We call it the Bluetooth button, but it's also the one that we use to start and stop remote logging, things like that. So nothing's changed there. But now we've got a Bluetooth light in a status light, whereas back in the day we had a Bluetooth light host, OBD2, and power. And so what you're going to see now with the status light is whenever it's hooked up, it's going to be green whenever it has power. And then as you do different things, there's going to be different LEDs. It's a multicolor LED for the one status that's going to go through different colors based on what we're trying to accomplish. But we do still have a Bluetooth uh, indicator. So that's the devices itself. Let's see what else is in the package here. We've got box number one, which I'm assuming means we should open this one first. Probably doesn't matter, but we'll go ahead and spit it out. And we've got some decals. Always nice to get some decals. Looks like a black and maybe a blue one in there. We've got the uh, USB cable that's going to come in with it that has a USB-C for the device. Still has the A style on the other side. Now granted you can run a C to C on here if you wanted to. It's going to work perfectly fine. And we've got a nice little rubber band that kind of holds this all together. The cool thing about it is, is look how long this one is. This is finally a cable that's long enough that you can plug this thing in, set your laptop over in the passenger seat, or even in situations like this, you can plug it in, have your laptop sitting on your table while you're reading or writing flashes on there. Then we got a nice little lanyard here that you can use for whatever, put your keys on there, etc. It's got a nice quick disconnect clip on it. And then we'll go into box number two. Doesn't sound like much in there. Oh, we've got our thumb drive. So we've got our HP Tuner's thumb drive in this one, and this is going to have a copy of the software. Uh, not necessary. It's a nice little thumb drive, though, with the logo on it. What you're going to want to do, though, is go out and grab the latest version off the website because they're constantly updating that every time a new update is pushed out. It's pushed out in beta for a while, and so beta will go through multiple iterations and changes before it actually gets turned into a uh, finished product that goes out as this stable release. I would suggest if you're going to be using the MPVI 2 Plus, go ahead, grab the latest beta off the website. And also expect it to probably need a firmware upgrade the first time that you hook it up. That's pretty standard on these, and as new things roll out, there's going to be more updates constantly. So as I dive further into the 2 Plus, I'm going to be utilizing the beta, and I'm excited to get this thing hooked up to the GT350 and see what's going on with it run us through its paces and make some more content showing you guys how the new device works. As the car market evolves, as new technology comes out, as new platforms are supported by HP tuners, they're going to be putting out a new device like this every so often. The idea is for them to create something that is going to support everything in the future on. We know that we've got a device like the MPVI2 that up to a point supports everything has some features that you have to be hooked up onto the internet with. I'm going to assume that that's going to be the same for the MPVI2. A lot of the back end structure is going to work the same. But we do have the expandability and the flexibility moving forward for new platforms as protocols change or update. We see faster speeds. We're going to have a device that supports it moving forward. So from this point on, uh, I'm not sure whether or not the MPVI2 is going end of life, if it's going to be completely out of service. But I would guess that the MPVI2 Plus is going to be the way to move forward uh, because if you want to make sure in future proof, it's best to run the greatest and latest one that's out there. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. There's going to be more information on the HP Tuners website in the coming days, weeks. Uh, they actually should have the, ups, the website updated by the time this video goes live. And so, uh, and also go out there and subscribe to their YouTube, their Facebook, things like that. That way, Instagram is a great way to keep track of new feature releases, new platform releases, which is important to you guys that are doing a lot of tuning. And so, use their social media to kind of keep on top of things. And if you have any questions, comments, and things like that, go ahead and hit up the comments down below. I'm going to be shooting a lot of videos with the GT350 in the coming weeks and months using the new MPVI2+. Plus. I'm excited and I want to give a big thanks to HP Tuners as always for supporting the garage and getting us an advanced copy of this thing so we can play around with it. So you guys know the drill. I'm going to get back to it. Thanks for stopping by the garage. And remember, ABT, always be tuning.